Hi. Today, um, I wanted to talk about an experience that I had with a psychiatrist back in 2009. His name was Professor Toomey and I had been on antidepressants since 2004. My husband at the time, we're divorced now, um, had had a brain injury in 2003 and we ended up getting divorced the two years that I was married to him we were together for five years altogether but the two years that we were married were hell so I was on antidepressants since 2004 basically and I was going back and forth to my GP and I, I was saying like the doctor at the time Dr Morgan um he kept saying like you're not depressed, you don't, you have anxiety maybe, but you don't have a mental health issue and like kept turning me away and I kept going back and forth like, like, no, I need something, I need antidepressants and he kept saying, no, 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 there's nothing wrong with you. Um, in the end, he literally threw a prescription at me and he said, I'll give you a prescription for antidepressants but it's just to keep you happy. I don't believe you need them, but it, it'll keep you happy and get you off my back. The antidepressants, I mean, they did what they did, you know, they, they did their job, I guess, but I still wasn't right. And obviously I know that now, cause I know that I'm borderline. I kept asking for help, like for therapy and just help. And I basically said, like, I want to see a psychiatrist. And they were like, you don't need a psychiatrist. Don't be so dramatic. You don't need a psychiatrist. And again, I had to fight for it. And again, I was told, fine, we'll send you to a psychiatrist. But you don't really need one. Like, seriously, like, just giving you one to get off my back. So when I went to my the psych psychiatrist's, appointment at Kevin Card Hospital. My husband, my now husband, my second husband, um, came with me, thank fuck, because honestly, it was a nightmare. It was so wrong what he did. I made a complaint, but obviously they never really get disciplined. As soon as we were called in, he gave us a handshake. And he he's foreign, I'm not sure where he's from, maybe like France or something. So already there was like I don't know, accent and um you know, they put like you know, emphasis on different s syllables and blah blah blah. So I was having kind of trouble like maybe understanding him or gelling with him in a way because his mannerism was very offhandish and abrupt, which kind of showed in his accent as well, if that makes sense. Anyway, so he said like, go on in, go on into the room. So I went me and my husband. He told me where to sit. So I sat. And then he proceeded to close the door, put his chair in front of it, and sit on the chair. He literally blocked us in the room. That immediately got me guarded got me panicking, got my anxiety up, and I already didn't want to be there. And then I noticed that down the other side of the room, there was two people, um, two guys, and a professor to me said, um, these two are students, um, and they'd like to sit in on the appointment. Uh, do you have any objections? And I'm thinking, well, a bit late now you know like they're already in here and I felt 
like awkward so and I didn't want to come across as irrational because I'd already thought fuck I'd better be like really careful about how I act here because he's already locked me in and I haven't even like said a word to him yet so I was like no that's, you know fine whatever so then we were going through the appointment and he was asking me questions and we came to the question of do you ever get suicidal thoughts or suicidal feelings and I said yes I do and the question was so generalized like it wasn't like he was asking me are you suicidal he asked do I ever get suicidal thoughts so I didn't answer that I was suicidal at that point. I just answered that, yes, sometimes I do get suicidal thoughts. So he said straight away without even blinking, like without skipping a beat, I said, yes, I do. He turned to the students and he said, call down to Suicide Bay and get a bed for her. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, like I said, it was a general question of, do you ever feel suicidal? He didn't ask me whether I was feeling suicidal at that point, and I wasn't. So there was literally no need for me to be in Suicide Bay. So I'm sitting there like, and my husband was like, and I am very conscious of how I'm coming across now because I was scared to make any moves, any sounds, any <laughs> anything. Like, because I was so scared that I was going to make myself seem or sound irrational or mentally sick or suicidal, or, or any of them, those things. I was so scared that I was going to give him a reason to think that I'm fucked in the head. So the guy called down to Suicide Bay, Suicide Watch, and they didn't have a bed for me. So he was like, oh, okay. So that's another thing which really annoys me. It's like, he thought I was suicidal. He was wrong. Um, but he thought I was suicidal enough to, to call for an emergency bed in suicide watch. He wasn't going to let me leave that room or go home. The only place that he wanted me to go after leaving that room was Suicide Watch. And that's how, you know, like, he thought it was an emergency that I was going to kill myself. But then they didn't have a bed. She was like, oh, okay, fair enough. So he let me go. Um, he put the living shit into me that doesn't even make sense Chrissy but he really really like fucked up he is the biggest fucking moron that I have come across in this kind of thing I, I mean he's supposed to, supposed to be a professor in psychiatry but yet he clearly doesn't know how to do his job everything that he did like blocking the doorway that would get anyone's paranoia kicked in anyone's it's human nature to not to feel it's human nature to feel anxiety when you are being blocked into a corner like he literally backed me into a corner and 
human beings don't deal well with that, regardless of whether you have a mental illness or not. And if I had reacted to that, as anyone else would, he would have put that down to being mental illness. <laughs> Dr. Toomey does not have any clue how to interact with someone, with anyone. He was, I mean, it wasn't just me he blocked in there. It was my husband as well. And my husband wasn't on trial, you know? It felt like I was on trial. Um, and I honestly felt like I would have told him any fucking goddamn bullshit to get out of that room because that's all I wanted to do. And that's not helpful because if I was fe feeling suicidal, which I wasn't, but... I would have lied. Um, I would have told him any fucking thing to get out of that fucking room. Um, what he did was so fucking wrong. And people have to speak up about it. That was in 2009. I was so put off by the whole thing. He told me that I have a personality disorder. But he didn't give me any information about personality disorders he didn't tell me what one he thought I might have he didn't like tell me what the next step was to diagnose me he did nothing <laughs> and then I left and that was as I said 2009 and I didn't go back for any sort of help I kept going I was on um antidepressants but I was too scared to get diagnosed with a personality disorder because of how he reacted how he treated me it was extremely unprofessional he was completely out of order and it was absolutely shocking behavior from someone who is apparently a professional. Um, he put me off getting help and I didn't go back until 2016. I hope that if someone sees this and that he's done it to them or somebody's had a similar experience with a different so-called professor or psychiatrist whatever that they do something about it I made a complaint and about him misconduct and all of that um I had a reply saying that he was like pulled up about it but then he basically sent out letters that he didn't actually send out to me. He basically I had a phone call saying that I had missed an appointment and I didn't receive an appointment. They had the right address for me, but nothing came to me. And it wasn't just the one letter, it was, I think it was about five or six letters. And yet none of them turned up. So he basically complained that I was ignoring, um, letters and they made a complaint about me and then refused to give me another appointment so I didn't have any other appointments since 2009. So that is my really bad appointment with a psychiatrist that fucked up basically.